Welcome, welcome everyone. My name is Sean, and today we got to talk about this situation that happened a couple of days ago in the city of Chicago, where members of the Chicago Teachers Union, also known as teachers, decided that it was appropriate to identify who was a registered voter in their classroom, their public school classroom, and then march those individuals to the polls in order to vote for a tax hike that Brandon Johnson, who by the way used to work for the school system, who is an ally of the Teachers Union, has been pushing as a ballot initiative that, again, they're conducting in the middle of March. So this kind of machine-style politics has a lot more impact. And how some people now, after the fact, are saying, hey, you know what? It's a little bit questionable for this political organization that endorses this political policy to force kids into the polls or encourage them with a very stern encouragement into the polls in order to vote for their favored legislation. Now, we're going to get into this, but before we do I want to thank everybody who signed up over on actualjusticewarrior.com slash join. Oh, give me the money. Give you give me the money. Okay. And remind you that on Saturday, April 27th, I will be at the Minds Fest, Austin, Texas. Link to tickets, top of the description. Now to ethics questions about the parade to the polls. It's an event to take Chicago public school students to the voting booth. Tonight, NBC 5's Charlie Wojciechowski looks at the controversy about the political messages that may be associated with the event. So first things first, right off the bat, I gotta say this because I'm contractually obligated, but this local news anchor, very nice looking lady, v very attractive. I'm liking what she's doing with her hair, and I have to say this because if I don't, then your preverts, your disgusting, disgusting preverts out there in the audience would be commenting on this, and honestly, I, I just can't stand for you people to be objectifying this beautiful woman. Every vote matters. It was billed as a nonpartisan parade to the polls. So first thing first, right off the bat, the idea that this was billed as a non-political event absurd in every possible way. The Chicago Teachers Union is an inherently political organization. They are one of the most powerful political organizations in the city of Chicago, if not the most powerful. And one of the proofs of that is the fact that their guy, Brandon Johnson, is in the mayor's office and he was able to oust an incumbent in order to get there. By the way, unions are among the highest spending organizations in American politics total, but in these particular types of elections, especially when they're not in November and they're in a random day in March, they have incredible outsized power. So they are obviously a political organization, one of the largest contributors nationwide, probably Brandon Johnson's largest individual contributor, and they're taking advantage of this random in the middle of March kind of election where a political machine is heavily advantaged. So yeah, it's, it's inherently political. And by the way, the next sentence after that guy said what it was billed as kind of kind of gives away the game if you don't believe me it was billed as a nonpartisan parade to the polls repeat after me we will not give up the fight housing is a human right but there were certainly political messages chanted as chicago teachers union members marched a large group of public school students from an engagement event at their west side headquarters so yeah the idea on its surface that this was a non-political event when it's being put on by one of the most powerful political organizations in the city of chicago by the way a partisan political organization and they're voting on a policy proposal from Brandon Johnson, who's their guy, is absurd on its face in every possible way. But then they don't even try to hide it. They have somebody with a bullhorn trying to force the kids to chant for their political preferences this nonsense about housing being a human right, which side of the aisle tends to believe that. And again, it's all in support of a mega tax increase that these people who are in public schools who likely don't pay any taxes at all are going to be implementing on the broader Chicago population. So it's absurd in every way that this was apolitical. And again, they took a break from school time to get these kids to the polls. So imagine if you're a registered voter and you don't want to vote, you don't want to participate in this, but your teacher who has the power over your grades is telling you that you have to do so. To Union Park so that those who were over 18 would cast what in many cases was their first vote. Yeah, so they're dragging these kids out there to cast their first ballot in their first vote ever. They don't know anything about this. First of all, they attend Chicago public schools. Not exactly a bastion of learning and education. And remember, teachers are supposed to be educating, but this is clear and obvious, not only indoctrination, but kind of like a thuggish tactic in order to push people into the polls to vote for their favorite policy preference.
reference. Again, just imagine that you pay taxes through the nose because you live in a big major liberal city and they have a tax increase on the ballot. But then one of the things that you pay taxes for is public education and the people that are supposed to work for you, the parents, and educate your kids are bringing your kids to vote to raise more of your taxes because they think they could benefit off of the misuse of those public funds. Now, I would say imagine that because most of you would have to imagine that, but if you're a Chicago taxpayer, that is exactly what happened in this situation. And I don't give a damn what side of the aisle you're on, and likely this would have passed in the very blue city of Chicago no matter what, but the fact of the matter is you should feel insulted by the fact that the teachers union is just blatantly abusing their power in this way on camera and they're making a joke, a mockery of it. For the upcoming Illinois primary. It gives the youth a chance to um, speak and give power in their voices. Oh, we're giving the youth a chance to speak and give power in their voices as long as they say what the teachers union wants them to say, as long as they vote the way the teachers union wants them to vote. So isn't that great? Isn't this what the founders envisioned when they created a constitutional republic? Government interests that benefit off the taxpayer that are leeches on the tax taxpayer using the ignorant children of the taxpayer in order to vote themselves more benefits. Teacher Brock Massey brought students from his Kenwood Academy class. It's an opportunity for kids to come out, see what's going on, and then engage in their own po uh, political rights. So here you have a teacher who brought the students from his own class to come out and vote, and he's like, oh, it's such an opportunity for these kids to see what's going on, to see the wild different spectrum of perspectives being the teacher's union perspective and the teacher's union perspective, and then they can vote for the teachers union perspective in this election that's going to have low turnout so that way our political machine can definitely secure the win for this massive tax increase. But events like this have been criticized, many claiming it's an exploitation of students for the political purposes of the people who brought them here. So first and foremost, I hate this like both sidesism where they're like many of the critics are claiming that, you know, this might be a way to exploit the teenagers for the political purposes of the political organization that is clearly an obviously doing that. This is not ambiguous. Take a position, local news guy with a million letters in your last name. I want to hear you point out that this is obvious. Everybody knows what's going on here. It's ridiculous and absurd and shame these teachers rather than just having them spit out generic talking points about what they're doing. And by the way, this should be illegal to do. You have a political organization taking children out of school to go vote. And at the end of the day, that's wrong. And it's a violation of CPS's code of ethics. If any other group that spent the kind of money and resources on politics that CTU does did the same activity, it would be national news every single night. So he says that it violates Chicago public school policy, but the thing is, teachers unions entrench themselves so their members never face any consequences for anything, even when they're abusing the kids. It's impossible to fire these teachers, so there's no consequences for that. It may be against policy, but guess what? The election already happened. They already got these people to vote in favor of their position. They're likely going to win, and there's nothing you're going to be able to do about this, and if you do, guess what? They'll violate policy policy again in order to protect their own interests rather than the interests of the broader population. But what he said, 100% true. If any other organization did this, people would be calling foul. But because the teachers union has such a grip, this has been mostly an internet slash local news story, although I'm sure Fox News covered it at some point in time. In a statement, Chicago Public School says it encourages engagement but does not endorse specific campaigns or advocate for specific election results. It says CPS has shared with CTU its concerns that the March 15th event be nonpartisan and comply with its ethics policies. So yeah, the Chicago Public School says, oh, listen, there's there's nothing wrong with this situation or anything like that. I mean, sure, we're chanting political slogans, shifting them to the polls. And by the way, I made a mistake earlier saying the election already happened, but it actually goes up to March 15th. This is early voting. But trust us, the most politically powerful organization in the city of Chicago that gets to hold their power by having people vote in huge blocks in these kind of off-year style elections. This would be the Democratic primary, but this basically determines who the candidates are going forward, and there are ballot initiatives and whatnot that they want them on board for. You, you know, that that's no big deal, nothing to worry about. That's just perfectly normal. They're not trying to buy off these kids. I mean, one of the ways that you probably try to buy off a kid is with the pizza party, and they definitely weren't, oh, oh wait, they, they, they did that too. Hey, y'all! But while they enjoyed pizza waiting to cast their ballots, many students said they probably wouldn't have voted 
if there wasn't a drive like this one. So yeah, they're handing out pizza and whatnot to these kids in order to get them there, and the kids are saying that they probably wouldn't have voted in the exact way that the teachers union wanted them to vote, if not for this drive to vote exactly how the teachers union wanted them to vote. Had they not organized this event and brought everyone together today, do you think you would have went to vote on your own? Probably not. <laughs> So this is a deciding factor in, in participating. Yeah. So I just want to point out that for some ungodly reason, this child is wearing a COVID mask. It is current year 2024, not an old story. But that reminds me that the Chicago's union number one goal during the course of the whole COVID-19 pandemic was to not protect the interests of the students and not educate the students, but to keep the schools closed for as long as possible, as long as they got paid, which just goes to show you they don't give a damn about these students. And sure, they'll give them a pizza party here and there drag them out to the polls but as soon as they're done doing the bidding of this organization they'll throw them away like the trash that they view them as never forget what they did to these very same kids they're now trying to weaponize in order to vote for their policy preferences housing is a human right. students joined in chants of housing is a human right as they marched to the polls today led by members of la casa norte and chicago votes this was billed as an effort to help high school students vote for the very first time. I feel very excited. I think it matters and uh, it's important to vote. But the nonpartisan integrity of this event under question with it starting with a congressional candidate forum hosted at the headquarters of the Chicago Teachers Union, a staunch advocate of Bring Chicago Home. That's the ballot referendum that would change the real estate transfer tax rates to raise millions to help the unhoused. Now in this other local news segment, they actually explained the ballot initiative that they're supposed to be voting on. It's called the Bring Chicago Home Initiative. It's a massive tax increase on people who own property allegedly to pay for housing for the homeless find it very interesting that they have all this money to throw out these illegal migrants these asylum fraudsters they can shelter them but they need a special tax increase on people who actually are productive and providing housing in order to provide shelters for the homeless allegedly but yeah that kind of goes to the point about how this was clearly and obviously a partisan event because they're chanting housing is a human right while promising that this vote yes on this initiative will make housing a human right. There are hundreds of students that don't have a house. We need to bring important costs to this because a lot of people just go out. There's people on the streets every day. We just pass by them. It is very important that everybody has their own house. Also of note, on chairs throughout the auditorium, there were voter guides with a link to ChicagoVotes.com. In there was a comic strip showing the mayor pitching the referendum and another showing a polling place saying your valued vote is needed to bring Chicago home. Register voters, lay out behind them. It was an issue teachers had talked to students about in the classroom before this event. Now, there's also an increase on the tax on houses being sold in the city of Chicago. Any property sold over a million dollars would see a tax increase. And that big number is supposed to be absolutely, oh, it's only the richest of the rich. But if you think about the price of real estate in the city of Chicago or in any major metropolitan area, this is a huge portion of the real estate. So this is a massive tax increase on a huge portion of the population, not just civilians but in terms of businesses and whatnot that they're just implementing and they're using ignorant stupid kids to do so and dumb slogans like housing is a human right as the justification like you stupid kid you, you you don't hate the homeless do you if you vote for this tax increase that you don't have to pay because you don't pay any taxes then guess what the the hobos will they'll be able to get a house we promise you that's exactly what's going to happen even though we know this is never going to happen they never really forced like a the um, decision wants us, but they definitely gave us information about it. I definitely believe that it's important. It's a significant factor, and I definitely feel like um, people should definitely be for it. Bring Chicago Home was not officially part of this go to the polls event, but the campaign was clearly hoping to win support from young voters sympathetic to the cause. Now, I just want to point something out to you because they're promising in their package to vote for this that this will raise about $100 million in order to house the homeless. But in terms of the asylum shelters that they're paying for in the city of Chicago, they actually have government contracts for the food. And I just did a video on how they're not even eating the food. But if you add up the full worth of the contracts of the food for these asylum fraudsters in the city of Chicago that they're not eating, by the way, that they're choosing to let throw out. WG 
Energy and Investigates took a look at those contracts and payments. 77 Communities Meal Service has already been paid $3.7 million to feed migrants, but could stand to make as much as $45 million. A second company, 14 Parish, has received $3.8 million, according to city records, with the potential to make more than $57 million. It actually adds up to in and around this amount of money. Like, they could easily not pay for these illegals, these people who are defrauding the system, and pay for this supposed housing, but what this is actually about is raising the tax, getting more control over the economy, and never actually building anything. Remember, it's an excuse that we can't do this for the American homeless in the city of Chicago. Meanwhile, they got truckloads of money for the unhoused asylum seekers, the desperate beggars that are defrauding our system and spitting in the face of the city of Chicago when they provide them free food. It's been kind of insulting to hear from like elected officials and things to, that they keep assuming that young people are being pressured by adults to vote a certain way because young people are entirely capable of making decisions on their own. But at some CPS schools, teachers were doing more than just educating students about bring Chicago home. They help with like the um, homelessness in on the streets and stuff and make housing more affordable. Did your teachers encourage you to vote for it? Yes. And that youth vote could have a significant impact on whether the controversial referendum passes. Now look, in a lot of stories, I asked you guys what you think and to let me know down in the comments below. I still want to know that, but I'm not going to pretend that there's any ambiguity about this story. What the CTU did in this situation is absolutely wrong. It is election meddling. It is a problem. It should be illegal. And honestly, I think that ballot initiative is going to pass. And the fact of the matter is these politically minded organizations feel entitled to your kids and entitled to use them as props in order to forward their agenda. But yeah, that's really all I have to say about this. Again, let me know what you think down in the comments below. If you like the video, show them by leaving a like, subscribe for more content, follow me on the social medias, support me via the support links in the description of this video. This has been me talking about the absolute ridiculousness of the city of Chicago and how they are going to get away with it. Till next time.